At the end of the first millennium, around 1000 AD, China was definitively the most powerful country in the world. More than a third of the world lived within its borders, its technology was the most advanced in existence, and its economy accounted for an astronomical 50% of the world's GDP. The West paled in comparison to China, but eventually, Europe arose from its dark ages. The importance of China diminished, and the West came to rule the world. Today that is still largely the case, but China is rising again. In 1978 China had a GDP of only $200 billion, only about 4% of the world's GDP. But nowadays, that GDP has risen to $11 trillion and accounts for 15% of all economic activity in the world. This economic renaissance of the last 40 years is largely thanks to one industry, manufacturing. We've come to accept that China is the world's factory, but it wasn't always this way. In the early 20th century goods were often just produced right near where they were sold. America made American goods, Europe made European goods. It wasn't until cheap, worldwide shipping became available that the production side of a company could be relocated to the other side of the world. But why did China win? How did this country become the manufacturing giant it is today? The Chinese economy thrives as a manufacturing powerhouse, and the products seem to be everywhere. The majority of tags, labels, and stickers on a variety of goods proclaim they are made in China. Because of this, it's understandable that Western consumers might wonder, why is everything made in China? Lower wages. Because China is home to approximately 1.41 billion people, making it the most populous country. The law of supply and demand tells us that since the supply of workers is greater than the demand for workers. Moreover, the majority of Chinese were rural and lower middle class or poor until the late 20th century, when internal migration turned the country's rural urban distribution upside down. These immigrants to industrial cities are often willing to work many shifts for low wages. China also doesn't strictly follow laws related to child labor or minimum wages, which are more widely observed in the West. However, this situation seems to be changing as report says they have increased their minimum wages in response to increases in the cost of living, taxes and duties. As we know taxes are very important if a country has to hire export or import tax it will never grow. China introduced their He Export Tax Rebate Policy 1985 as, as a way to boost the competitiveness of its exports by abolishing double taxation on exported goods. Exported goods were subject to 0% value-added tax, meaning they enjoyed a VAT exemption or rebate policy. Additionally, consumer products from China were exempted from any import taxes. These lower tax rates helped to keep the cost of production low, enabling the country to attract investors and companies looking to produce low-cost goods. Currency Well as we know China they won't stop from cheap tactics. China has been accused of artificially depressing the value of the yuan to provide an edge for its exports against similar goods produced by U.S competitors. China keeps a check on the appreciation of the yuan by buying dollars and selling yuan. The yuan was estimated to be undervalued by 30% against the dollar in late 2005 by the Chinese government. Why is the Chinese economy so strong? China has many favorable conditions that strengthen its economy. It often invests heavily in domestic infrastructure and real estate. It has lower wage requirements and favorable tax treatment help make manufacturing costs low. It also boasts relative supply chain efficiencies that entices international corporations. In addition to this US also owes money to China as of April 2022 the United States owes China over $1.2 trillion. The bottom line, many people have wondered if China will lose its spot as the world's factory as other emerging economies offering cheap labor will leave China in dust. However, the availability of cheap labor is just one of many factors that have kept the made in China going for many years. It will take more than low labor costs for emerging economies to set up a business ecosystem that can compete with China's. For some time to come, China will be the world factory with its low production costs, huge labor pool, vast talent base, and business ecosystem. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon.